got a text that no one ever wants to get. Alright, so I wanted to hop in here and just film a short little clip um, before hopping into the footage finding out about my mom's breast cancer. And currently, I'm in my backyard here in Indiana. Um, and when we set out to do our one year world trip, you know, we set out to chronicle the good and the bad of full time travel. And one of the hardest things, honestly, was knowing that we, when we set out for a year, we were going to miss family things and having a regular um, community. Um, on this particular day, uh, I got the bad news in the morning and then later in the afternoon uh, we went to the grocery store and it was really cool to check out the Filipino grocery store. Um, but it didn't make sense to put <laughs> these two things together and so the grocery store video will actually be coming out um, tomorrow. Um, but in this one I did want to cover um, my mom's breast cancer and I will actually be giving an update at the end after this clip. Oh, good morning. So we got over eight hours of sleep and yet I feel like I slept five. <laughs> I think I'm still catching up on only getting three hours of sleep the night before. But I did have to wake up because it's time for breakfast. So it's 8.45. Um, so at breakfast, I got a text that no one ever wants to get. My dad said that my mom yesterday found out that she has breast cancer. My dad sounds really hopeful, sounds like it's treatable. But that's just hard to, to hear and I was really one. I'm gonna try a video chat my mom while she's still awake. And no, we can't even get into our room <laughs> because our key's not working, so Peter went down to figure that out. And I'm gonna still try to call my mom even though we're in the hallway because she's about to go to bed and I wanna to talk to her. It's hard to deal with that kind of stuff no matter where you are, but, but it feels a little bit harder when you're halfway around the world. What is it? No. The battery is low, but. Oh, the battery. That's why I was beeping last night. So it was really good to talk with my mom and dad. Um, they have hope because the doctor said that this is like the most common form of breast cancer. It should be easily treatable, so that's good. She has a three hour appointment um, in the next couple of days where they'll like do all these different um, tests, treatment, things like that. It's never fun to get that news and then my dad was like, yeah, mom didn't want you to call. And I was like, mom, why don't you want me to call? She's like, because I might start crying. And I was like, well, that's fine. It's fine to to show emotion it's it's better to show emotion and be real anyways so that was good we got to to talk and catch up oh man that was so hard to watch and just um remember how helpless i was feeling um especially being so far away um that was actually filmed over two years ago and yes i'm still editing videos from our one year world trip um, it didn't help when we lost over 70 days of footage when our hard drive crashed and we couldn't recover it and we spent over a year retelling those lost episodes. So we had to pay at one yeah. booth, grab our tickets, run down on the bus, hop on the bus and it was like snowing slash raining I think at the time. I did want to hop on here and give you an update now because I can and to help give the update I have my mom here from Pennsylvania. Yes. Oh my goodness. And she just wanted to tell you I'm cancer free. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, so happy. And I'm so happy that we can share that with you right now. Um, you know, but when we were traveling and stuff, we didn't know what the results were going to be. So you actually found out that was April um, when you found out that you had cancer. Right. You haven't really shared too much publicly like on Facebook and things yeah. like that she's more private um, but I was like well just have on my channel and just share it so she's willing to do that after I found out um, 
it was a fast growing cancer and so they wanted to um, get it right away. So I had a lumpectomy and got that taken out and then the results came back from that that my oncotype score was very high. Um, I think it was like 23 and at that time they would do chemo on anybody with that number. But my oncologist, um, she scheduled my chemo treatment to start June 9th, but she also told me that the beginning of June there was going to be a conference in Chicago of oncologists reviewing this study that over years 10,000 women had been doing and that weekend was the results coming in from that and so she wanted to wait that's crazy timing <laughs> she wanted to wait um, that's why she scheduled me for June 9th so when the results came back it was that it really my numbers fell into the space that it was okay to have chemo or not and so she talked to me about that and it left it up to me my choice to do chemo or not and I chose not to do chemo and what a blessing because you really did not I did want, not to, do want to do chemo and I mean I don't want you to do chemo either like I was really fearful of that you know and I mean just I don't know hearing those words it's just not not right. fun when someone that you know and love is is going through that and I mean like how how did you feel like giving us the news knowing that Peter and I were like so far away it was really hard because um, I wanted you there Oh, don't put this one in. <laughs> oh. I mean, you had, you had, you had my sister and my brother, they live close. They are like within two hours, you know, but like, and I, I mean, had I been in Colorado, you know, that's still far, but just like being in the Philippines and like being halfway around the world, it just like and the time, seemed that much farther. And the time zone too, like. Yeah, it was <clears> hard to connect. It was hard to connect with you because yeah. you were so, you know, our time differences was. Yeah, it was hard. Like I'd be sleeping when you would be awake. and Right things like that so why are um, you tearing up <laughs> don't put this in there I do I wasn't going to tear up why are you crying because <laughs> I'm happy <laughs> you're happy now <laughs> you also said like at the same at the same time like I mean your focus wasn't on us it was on like you beating cancer and doing right. what you needed to do but, to... I, but I'd like my I would like my family to be there I know. you know when I was going through it so don't make me cry now. I mean, I wanted to be there for sure. And that's, I think well, that I was, know that did. was the hardest thing. And knowing like, you know, if we came home now, like we wouldn't come back out traveling. And so right. we did consider it. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was hard. Yeah. You have a tear strolling down my face. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm here now supporting Lisa through her infertility challenges. And mm -hmm. I just took a week and I said, I'm coming out to Indiana. Which I'm thankful for. So that's why I'm here is to give her <laughs> the hugs that she needs. It's tough going through through physical challenges. I did have my husband, which was really great. Um, he, in fact, put up verses in our bathroom on my mirror of um, encouraging, you know, verses to trust in God. He's got this. It's in his hands. And one of my favorite songs is by Ren Collective, uh, My Lighthouse. And my so we, Lighthouse, <laughs> my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. Yeah, he I will carry, carry you straight to. Yeah. Anyways, anyways, however it goes, we like it. <laughs> well, anyways, we'll edit that out. <laughs> and he typed out all the words and put them on my mirror in my bathroom. And even now, it's still there. Two years later. Oh, really? Two years I know later, that. my verses and the song, and I was just re nice. you know singing that the other day when I was getting ready to come out. For every day of your radiation, what did you do at the end of the day? So after radiation, I would come home and I would, um, I love to quilt, so I made a block of um, strip piecing with pink and um, breast cancer fabric and I created a quilt for myself. And then you actually did a walk with that quilt, didn't you? I did a 5k um, walk and then they had a parade for breast cancer survivors and I participated in that and that was very emotional. My friend actually supported me um, going to this. She's an advocate for breast cancer and survivors. So thankful that this is the news that we're sharing right now. Um, 
and I think that's sorry for my wet face. Oh, you're not even crying that much. Oh. Have you seen my fertility videos? Oh yes, I have. <laughs> um, so thankful um, that my mom can come out here and we can be together, and she could be here to share this news. I just happened to be editing this video. I knew it while she was here. I knew it. Um, I had it on my calendar. I was going didn't. through Vietnam, and I went. She's going to the Philippines next, and, and no. no, it wasn't. No, <laughs> I realized it the day before she was flying out that that's what I was editing. Um, so very thankful. So and she twisted my arm and she broke my wrist to get me to do this. Okay, my mom recently did break her wrist over COVID, but it had nothing to do with me. That's another story. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you're not already. And I can't wait to share more of the Philippines with you. Definitely check out the grocery store video tomorrow because that one's hilarious. All right, guys, see you in the next video. Bye. To have chemotherapy, but hang on, pause. The, did you hear this garbage truck? It wasn't here. It was gone. We thought it was gone, and now I said it was. Coming I know. Back up I know. The other side. It's so stinking loud. <laughs> I took it on um, a five k, five, five k, five keg. <laughs> there's there's beer involved with this breast cancer awareness. <laughs>